Today, it doesn't have to be trickle-down economics. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Victoria was booming before the pandemic and on track to overtake Sydney as the nation's largest city. But then, after months of disaster, including around 800 deaths when the state was sealed off thanks to the virus, Victoria was of course the state worst hit by both the human and financial toll of the pandemic. The long lockdowns smashed the state, shredded jobs, livelihoods and confidence. But now, new shoots of hope are emerging, and indeed Victoria could spend its way to prosperity. And Daniel Andrews has zigged, whilst the federal budget zagged. The latter was pure trickle-down economics, such as tax cuts for the wealthy and incentives for businesses designed to boost the economy, with the hope that the increased activity would flow down like water to everybody else. If the rich get ever richer, then the crumbs from their table may fall on the hungry. And we know that soon Victoria will release its budget, and in contrast to trickle down, the state government is using the opportunity of record low interest rates to flood the community in cash. Back in April, the government took out a $24.5 billion loan, and they are spending big and fast in an attempt to revive the flagging economy after the virus lockdowns, and in an attempt, perhaps, to revive their fortunes ahead of elections down the track. Now, we already know Victoria is investing in one of the world's largest batteries and driving towards sustainable energy. They also have announced $750 million will be spent on mental health programs, including new beds. And also, children will get free kindergarten programs. And today, the Victorian government has committed a game-changing $5.3 billion toward building 12,000 social housing homes throughout Melbourne and the regional areas. And just for context... The recent federal budget put aside $1 billion in social housing funding for the entire nation, but that money was not to build anything. It simply facilitated low-cost loans if states or organisations wanted to fund projects. The Victorian package to be included in the state's 2021 budget to be released on November the 24th will deliver 9,300 new homes as well as replacement of about 1,100 existing public housing units. And Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews said 2,000 of the new homes would be for people living with mental illness, while 2,900 new affordable and low-cost homes will be built to help low- to moderate-income earners live closer to work. And there would also be 1,000 dwellings to support Indigenous Victorians, and another 1,000 to support victims of family violence, the Victorian Premier said. This will change lives, giving thousands of Victorians the secure and stability of a home, he said. It's a profound investment in a stronger, fairer Victoria. A Victoria that recognises everyone deserves a place to call home. The new homes will meet seven-star efficiency standards to be comfortable during summer and winter. And the program would create around 10,000 jobs each year over the next four years, with the first six tenders out this month and the first 6,000 dwellings expected to be completed within 18 months. And Housing Minister Richard Wynne said 25% of the funding would be committed to regional Victoria. Whether you're in Portland or Wodonga, you'll be a recipient of this investment going forward, he said today. And the Victorian Greens acting housing spokesperson Sam Hibbins welcomed the package but said there were more than 100,000 people on the waiting list for public housing. And social housing homes 
as a proportion of all households is 3.2%. That's below the national average of 4.5%, a Victorian Council of Social Services spokesman said. But VCOS chief Emma King said the programme tipped to boost Victoria's social housing supply by 10% in four years would be, quote, a massive leap towards solving the state's housing and homelessness crisis. This colossal investment will mean fewer people cold, hungry and homeless and more people in work, Ms King said in a statement. A single investment of this scale has not been seen in many decades, if ever. It's a game changer. And Ms King said, while housing was a springboard to a good life, many people living on either job seeker or job keeper could not pay for both rent and basic necessities. The difference of being able to access a property that's at a fixed rate of income is just phenomenal, she said. With a roof over your head, you can overcome all the other challenges more easily. And Council to Homeless Persons Chief Jenny Smith also welcomed the historic level of investment in social housing. Lack of social housing has been driving people into homelessness and making it almost impossible for people to escape homelessness, she said. Without a secure, affordable home, it is almost unachievable for people to engage in education or employment, much less to maintain their health and well-being. And Treasurer Tim Pallas said in Parliament recently $107 billion of state capital projects are commencing or underway. Now, interestingly, they're currently investing more in Victoria than the Commonwealth intends to spend across the entire nation over the next decade. And the state government has built the architecture for spending money quickly across a massive geographic spread. On the website, there's a map where projects are and most are set to receive something. Now, trickle-down economics generally does not work because cutting taxes for the wealthy often does not translate to increased rates of employment, consumer spending and government revenues in the long term. Instead, cutting taxes for middle and lower income earners will drive the economy through the trickle-up phenomenon. The opposite of trickle-down economics could be called the New Deal or Keynesian economics. It's a system where the government invests in people the word invest is important with the New Deal economics. The money invested is paid back many times over. This trickle-up effect means policies will boost the productivity of society as a whole, and thus those benefits will trickle up to the wealthy. And to me, this is the point. Low rates of interest on current government loans are a potential game-changer, but only if they're invested in the right areas. Using the funds to perpetuate a broken, trickle-down economic model is throwing good money after bad. We should be zigging and not zagging. And that is a political, not an economic decision. And before I go, a quick reminder that next Tuesday at 8pm Sydney time, there will be another DFA live stream event. And we're going to be talking about investing in the current uncertain climate. And I'll be joined by Damien Klassian from Nucleus Wealth. As you may know, Nucleus Wealth and I have tied up to offer Walk the World Fund and Walk the World Super as a way of investing, given the issues relating to deposits and the market risks that we face. So this will enable us to take that discussion further and answer specific questions. So mark your diaries. We look forward to seeing you there on Tuesday. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.